Tian, and I want to go over the topic of finance. Now, um, I'll just give you a little story. I, you know, my background is in aerospace engineering, and you know, after I got the degree, I worked for about five years, and you know, got the house and mortgage was like half my income. And at the end of the month, I still felt broke, and I couldn't really understand why. Uh, you know, I thought you know, getting a college degree was the ticket to um, you know a better life. But it just it was it wasn't <laughs> at least not for me, uh, and I don't know if I did something wrong or what. But uh, I don't know if you felt the same. But I think a majority of people do. And so I went through this uh, research of like, okay, I, I'll just work harder. So I did that, and as I did, I got taxed more. Uh, and I was like, wait a minute, what are you trying to tell me? Like, I'm working overtime, and now my tax rate is now from twenty eight percent to thirty seven percent. Like. It, it didn't make sense to me. So the more I made, the more I was penalized. At least that's what I felt. Uh, so I wanted to learn about the tax system, figure out how do I reduce this. And so that kind of led to like, hey, you got to start a business. And then you know, from business to like, okay, now you got to learn how to do sales. Now that you, you do sales, you get to invest in real estate and move into passive income and build assets that would, uh, uh, would make money for you. Uh, so a, a, after a while, you're kind of struggling by and trying to figure out this, like, how does money work? Uh, I kind of just asked these questions, and then with asking these questions, I guess when you ask proper questions, you get proper answers. Uh, so I started Googling and YouTubing, and so I kind of found out that, yeah, money is basically printed out of thin air nowadays because our government is basically spending money that they don't have. I learned about the history of it, but when Nixon, you know, cut the, the 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 you know back in the day the dollar was backed by gold but now he cut that because at the time we were pretty much going bankrupt all the foreign uh, countries were pulling their gold out of America and and they kind of uh, you know trading their dollars for the gold and so if they you know I guess repatriated or something uh, all that gold uh, we would be bankrupt so he had to cut it and I, I guess it makes sense so what he did was just kind of push that collapse further and further for now 30 40 years now um and every 30 40 years we usually have a new monetary system and we're way long overdue for that i, I think we're it's, it's coming close i think 2018 to 2020 we're going to have another 2008 type of uh, uh collapse and a lot of families going to be hurt so i want to make sure that our pack here is well informed and prepared on what to do uh, so I want to give you some resources that I have went through. Uh, also, just go through it because, um, you know, there's this – sometimes there's like conspiracy theorists and stuff like that that, that I'll probably present too. But I just want to kind of plant the seed, do your own research, and then make the best decision for your family. Um, yeah, and then any questions uh, that you have, uh, please you know let me know. Uh, I think I'll put a little Facebook comment thing so that I can get your feedback and then produce videos based on that to answer these questions that you have. And so in, in at the end of the day, real money is gold and silver. Uh, so you might want to pick up some of that uh, soon. Uh, silver is uh, about as of this recording, maybe about seventeen dollars an ounce right now, and gold is probably around twelve to thirteen hundred dollars per ounce. But silver is where you want to go because supposedly it's a there's a, it's a byproduct of manufacturing. So when the economy collapse or, or stops or whatever, it's uh, you know there's less silver produced because manufacturing has stopped. You know mining for ore or so or, or steel or whatever it is or iron, and and then there's no byproduct of silver anymore. So look into that, and I'm also going to present to you uh, how to basically. Uh, start your own bank uh, because I was like asking questions like hey if all these bankers are you know making all this money printing and enslaving the entire population through their inflation and and devaluing our dollars so that it costs takes more and more of our dollars to buy it and we can never catch up and as you know the housing prices go up rents go up and we're like dude we're trying to get ahead but we're being suppressed uh, because of our lifestyle and our day-to-day -day stuff uh, and it's hard, hard, it's hard to save. And the more we do save, it actually gives us less and less, you know, buying power. And so I was like, hey, you know, well, why don't we start our own bank? How do we start doing that? And so there's a way to do that too, where uh, if you had saved enough and you put that in your own bank and you loaned it out, that bank, that ten thousand dollars that you put in initially, will continue to collect interest and compound as it was still there because 
and here's the tip it's going to be backed by your life insurance so that way you can then loan it out use it for real estate invest it and it'll still grow at eight, you know eight percent with the ten grand as if it was still there but it's not <laughs> because you loaned it out but you're going to pay it back with interest and build up that credit line your own bank credit line that you can always use to pay off the student loan the cars real estate so when you know opportunities do come you have that source of funds available to buy uh, you know investments because I know that if back in 2008 when housing was cheap we couldn't get credit because the banks weren't loaning uh, so so this is a source where you can then grab that credit line open that, and use that credit line to pick up properties at very low prices when most people can't Hopefully that helps. I'm going to add some more through this. And this is just a little tip of the iceberg. Uh, I also want to show you how to build digital assets. So I'm going to show you kind of something easy to just get into now. Just kind of get your feet wet uh, with outsourcing. So let me show you this. This is a Merch Amazon. You want to go actually go to MerchAmazon.com right now and register for a free account. And all you do is basically upload designs. Now you may not be a designer. I'm not a designer. So I hire someone in the Philippines and your dollar is worth 50 bucks over there. So for buck fifty to three dollars an hour, they can design and upload shirts all day long. And it just sells on its own. Okay. Now there's a strategy in how I do this. You kind of look at the, uh, the analysis of the shirt here. This is uh, one week's worth, I believe. If we look at a whole month worth, I can show you some of the sales here where you just kind of get it passively. So here's all the, the shirts that are being sold, and you know, 12 here. You kind of look at it, you know, there's, it kind of adds up to maybe about 300 bucks here, just kind of sitting around 10, 30, 60, 80, 90, 100, 20, 170, 100, $200, 210, and then maybe, I don't know, maybe 220, 230. 330 I guess I don't know 350 I don't know yeah so it's just starts to add up for the whole month okay and that's basically passive income that comes in day in and day out whether you work for it or not because Amazon's gonna sell it and then you're gonna get your cut and you get to set the pricing so you can set at 10 bucks you know they usually sell at 3 to 23 their cost is 10 you get 10 bucks royalties and just to give you a little hint here we do a little bit of a, a price reduction when we first launch a shirt because if it doesn't sell within 60 to 90 days it gets removed from Amazon so we price real low just to get the initial sale and then we slowly increase the price as it sells well here such as this uh, shirt here that's selling really well and we start to increase the price a uh, dollar every three sales or something like that so anytime we get three sales or more we start to increase the prices by a dollar so we can start accumulating more and more sales okay so go ahead and do that. You're going to have to start off with maybe two shirts a day that you can upload or one shirt a day that you can upload and maybe a maximum of 10. And then as you reach those limits and you sell 10, 20, 100, they're going to tear you up to a higher amount so you can upload to 50. So this is the only 180 shirts designs. As we're uploading about maybe eight a day or something like that, it's going to take about maybe another two, three months before I actually fill up to 500 and then it's going to tear me to 1,000. And then we'll kind of go on and do it again. So this is what to look forward to. And I'll give you all the details on how to do this and how to be successful with um, building merch. And once you get to a point where you're making $800 a day to $1,000 a day just on selling shirts, uh, you're going to start to see that you can, you know, stop, not have a job anymore or do what you want to do and do what you love. Okay? All right. Thank you.